Hey, so this is a setup for a 2019 Les Paul Special. It's got the dual P90s, fully bound neck. Very pretty guitar. It's a TV yellow. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just tune it up and check the relief in the neck. So I like to sight down the neck and just visually see what the relief looks like. And I'll usually look from both sides uh, back of the guitar in front of the guitar and on both sides of the neck bass and treble side it looks like it's pretty flat right now but sometimes i just verify by putting that capo on the first putting my finger on i think it's the 17th it's where the body and the neck meet and then measuring at the eighth with the feeler gauge Right now I'm at 0 .008 here. People like to get the relief somewhere in the neighborhood of 0 .010 to, I like it even flatter, like even down to as much as 0 .07, 0 .06, but it just depends on what you like. Next thing I'll do is usually play the strings open to see if there's any buzzing going on. Just open. Check the height of the strings at the 12th fret. So this action's really low, it's like point, it's really low, 0 0.040 or even a little less. Uh, I usually like to end up at 0 0.050 to 0 0.060. So a little buzzy there. And then play a pie. Not too bad a pie, but it's a little bit, yeah, a little plonky. So, We'll do the action, we'll raise the action a tiny. But with these wrap around bridges, you just wanna be careful when you're raising the action that you don't slip off with the screwdriver, scratch the guitar, especially on a beauty like this. You also don't wanna mess up these screws, so you know, try and get a big screwdriver, give it a couple turns on both sides. You know this action's gotta come up a good amount on this one. And then check where you're at so this thing's playing pretty good all over the neck just a tiny little bit of buzz on a couple of frets up high and what I find is usually well, often if I just straighten out the truss rod a tiny bit a little bit less uh, bow in the neck so when you're gonna tighten First you loosen. That lets some of the tension off the neck so you don't hurt it. So I'm gonna just just give it about a quarter inch, a quarter turn, and then see how it plays up, up, up high now. So it kind of goes without saying that every time you make an adjustment, like to the truss rod there, or if you're adjusting the height of the strings, you're gonna need to retune, okay? Because when you adjust the height of this, it's gonna, it's gonna make the strings go sharp. And when you adjust the truss rod, it's also gonna make them go flat or sharp. So now indeed when I tighten the truss rod, straighten out the neck a little bit, um, that made the strings go lower. So, you know, you wanna keep checking with your string height gauge. So then I brought the bridge up a tiny bit more. So I'm at about 0 .060 at the 12th fret for string height. And now, there's no weird buzzing going on there in the high register where it was before. So it's just kind of a balancing act often where you might maybe want to straighten the neck out a tiny bit. If you're getting buzzing down the low frets, down here, you may want to loosen the truss rod a tiny bit, put a little more bend into the neck, and that should get rid of some of the buzz that's happening down on low frets. But once you loosen it, your strings are gonna come higher, you're gonna have higher action, and in that case you may want to lower your bridge uh, to get that action back. So when it comes to setting intonation on these wraparound bridges, play the open string, play that string at the 12th fret. It's a little sharp at the 12th. So you can't individually ingest the uh, string length on these. All you've got are these two, and not even all of these bridges have it, but hopefully you've got one where you've got two little Allen screws. So if I need to uh, 
bring it flat at the 12th fret, I need to increase the, the length of the string, which means this has to move back. To make it move back, you've got to tighten that little Allen wrench right here, right here. And it's gonna tighten just one way because this is on the lower part. So your high strings will move back a little bit. And if you find that you're also sharp on your low strings, you'll tighten here and it'll make it sort of angled this way. High strings, if they need to move back a little bit, you do that and then you'll check your low strings because it will have affected them too. And then you want to adjust this one accordingly and until you've got it the best you can for all six strings. I just want to say when you do go to adjust those little Allen screws, don't try and do it without loosening the strings. Because if you put a little Allen wrench in there and you try and crank on it to move it back, you're, you're pushing against all this string tension of all six strings and you're just going to end up stripping out that little tiny Allen wrench and then you're really screwed. So to move the bridge piece back, you tighten the screw and you can see it moves, moves it back. And once you think you've moved it enough, then you uh, recheck the internet. You want to make sure you use the right Allen key size because I was just doing it wrong too and it's really easy to make that mistake. This one's just a tiny bit bigger and that one's going to fit in there and it's not going to round out that, that Allen screw. This one, this is a tiny bit smaller and you put it in there and you keep trying to turn it and it's slipping. If you see it start slipping inside there, it's not catching, then you're just going to ruin that Allen key, that Allen screw. So you can see I've got it intonated now and it came out actually just about perfect, which is not always possible with these bridges, but you can see how far I had to move it back. It's not the greatest look maybe. They tend to, you know, you can see that it's been moved way back and they even tend to go up at a little bit of an angle when you move them way back but that's just the way these work and um, that's about it so this thing's set up playing good up and down the neck um some other things to check for that i didn't mention but i always check for is just playing the strings open and playing them all over so i'll play every single fret on the guitar and make sure there's no buzzing going on. Uh, one way to check the um, the height of the strings um, down here and how low the um, nut slots are cut is to fret on the third fret with your finger and then kind of tap lightly um, on the first fret and look for the distance between the string and this first fret. And when you do this, if you look up close, you'll see, you should see, it's just above the fret when you've got it fretted here on the third and you touch here on the first. You're hoping that it's just barely got a little space above that first fret. Then you know the, cut, the nut is cut about right. If you've got a ton of space, then the nut slots are not cut deep enough and that can be a problem. Or if you've got no space at all, and when you press on this third fret, it, the string is just laying on the first fret, then it may be cut too deep. And those are the cases where you may be hearing it buzz or make sounds when it's just playing open. I like to check pickup height because some guys just uh, ignore this, but it's actually pretty important to the sound of the guitar. So check how loud it is in the treble position. <laughs> compared to the uh, neck position. And if it's not, these are about even right now to my ears, but if it's not equal, uh, if it's too quiet in that neck position, you wanna raise up your neck pick up a little bit. Or if they're already both, you know, what you think is high enough, then you might wanna lower the, the treble pick up a little bit, the bridge pick up. And um, check the middle position. It shouldn't go down in volume greatly. Um, if it sounds kind of weird out of phase or just lose all it, loses all its um, umph and balls in the middle position, uh, the pickups could be out of phase. I find that a lot when people mess with guitars. But 
It still sounds good in the middle position, so you're good here. You know, check the uh, the pots. Make sure they're not scratchy. If they are, make some contact cleaner. Here's an interesting thing. You may come across now and then when I was checking the pots out. Just making sure they all turn smooth. I found that this one right here seems to have give in it. Like it's not as solid as the others. And if you look down at the side, it may not catch it on here, but you can see it has, yeah, it has some play. And that nut underneath is moving. Got to take off the knob um, and tighten that nut uh, very carefully so they don't scratch the guitar. Tighten the nut and this thing will be nice and solid. Sometimes you do want to take off this cover because you don't want, when you tighten that nut, sometimes the pot under there will just start spinning. So actually the best way to do it is to take this off, hold, hold the pot from this side with your hand, and then tighten on this side with your wrench. When you're taking off this back electronics cover, don't try and use a big huge screwdriver and, and pry from the side here because you're gonna mar the finish around this cover unless it's just a junky guitar and you don't care. The best way is to find something really tiny that will fit inside the actual screw hole in the cover and just pop it up that way. And we will just hold the pot on this side and then tighten the nut on the other side. But taking knobs off, sometimes you can chip and hurt the knobs you're trying to do it with uh, tools or your hands. You get one of these, they're not that expensive. I don't know, they're called a knob pooler or something. And these fit right over a knob and they have two little notches that will grab the edges of a knob. And you just sort of very gently work it back and forth. And see, this is a very tight knob too. It's, it's tight on that pot, but I was able to pull it without hurting the knob or hurting the guitar using this little guy.